On July 29, 2020, a Louisiana cop pulled over a vehicle speeding on the highway. It started just the same as any other traffic stop, but a search of the vehicle uncovered something horrifying. Sarge is a dead body in the trunk. Not only was Mitchell going almost 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, but he didn't even have a driver's license. Uh, do you have your driver's license? No, sir. Do you have a driver's license? No, sir. This charge alone could net him fines of up to $500 and six months in jail, not to mention the fines from the speeding ticket. But unbeknownst to the cop, Mitchell will be going back with more than just a speeding ticket. Is there any weed in the car, man? Let's don't stop. Step, step here. Is there any weed in the car? Yes or no? It's just a doobie and the ashtray, like, okay. other than that, dizzy. Anything like, else? Dizzy. When's the, when did you puff last? This was be like, honest. Because I'm a drug recognition expert. About an hour ago. The cop is looking to get Mitchell on more than just a DUI charge. An 18-year-old speeding in a car like this that stinks of weed tells the cop that there may be something deeper to this traffic stop than a kid going too fast. But before he asks to search the vehicle for any other drugs, Mitchell starts to act increasingly suspicious. All right, where are you headed right now? I was headed to, I was headed back home. Where's home? What's your address? No, stop, stop, come here. Where do you live? It's easy. It's easy to answer this. Where do you live? You, you don't know how to drive to your house? I was coming from there, how I got lost. So what's the address? You don't know your address? No, sir. Okay, come back here. Can I take a look at your car? Yes or not? Yes, sir. Mitchell has now consented to the search of his vehicle. The cop is realistically only searching for weed and any other drugs possibly in the car. But he has no idea what he's actually about to find. A search of the front seats turn up nothing, but upon examining the outside of the car, the cop discovered multiple bullet holes across the left side of the vehicle. It's becoming more and more obvious to the cop that something is not right at all here, and this suspect was likely caught up in something much bigger than he first realized. When did all this happen? When did all that happen? That happened. When? My brother, he said it How long ago? Like days? Yeah, like okay, days. come back. Just leave this here. Come back here. Just stay right here in front of my car. Hey, it's Jesse again. I'm sorry to bother you. I got this car speeding 73 and a 55. It's a black and orange Camaro. Yeah. And it's got like three bullet holes in the left side of it. He said he thinks his brother said that his car was in something two nights ago. The officer's check of the vehicle returns nothing other than proof Mitchell is lying. His address comes back as somewhere completely different to where he's saying, and the car is registered to someone with a completely different surname. Now he says he lives in Winsboro, but he's got a Richwood address, and the car comes back out of Monroe, and he's got this, uh, he's got a GPS thing put in, but he don't even know the address, so he's lying about a bunch of junk. Where do you live? Be honest to me. Monroe? Yes, Richwood? Yes, you don't live in Winsboro? Why would you try to bluff me on that? Why would you lie to me on that? Because I already knew that before this guy said something. What's up? Talk to me. You better stop lying to me right now. Or you're going to be in jail. I'm just going, I'm just going to my sister's house. To your sister's? That's the last freaking lie you better tell me. This whole situation is already immensely confusing. But then all of a sudden, something even weirder happens. A completely random man pulls up at the scene claiming that his family are looking for him. His family in Monroe is looking for him. Oh. They shot me out here. To okay, all right. Well, I got somebody they pulling up behind me, Scooter. What do you mean they were looking for him? They looking for him. The car missing. Hey! Okay, give me your phone. Hey, man. He's not giving that name, though. He's, he's, he's giving another name. And when they give yet another different name for Mitchell and the owner of the vehicle, the cop rightfully is at a loss. This has gone from a traffic stop to a full-on mystery, and the cop is determined to get to the bottom of it. There's a kid that's been reported missing, and that they took the car from Monroe 
and he lied to me about his last name, I mean his address and where he's from. Random guy pulls up behind me and said, hey, this guy's looking for that kid. I need to know if this car has been reported missing, stolen. He, and I know he's BSing to me about where he's going. He says he's going to his sister's house down here. If you could, hey, talk to him, see if you can figure out if the sister thing is legit. He said this guy gave him the car. He's got the GPS on his phone on the on the back lid. Uh -huh. He said that's where he's going, and I knew he was lying then. Slowly, things are starting to become more clear. If Mitchell is telling the truth, it seems as though his brother is letting him drive a car that he stole from the original owner. But that still doesn't explain the bullet holes, why Mitchell lied about his address, or why the random man appeared looking for him knowing he was driving that vehicle. But now on top of all of that, the cop has also just been told over the radio that there's a missing person report hidden amongst this mess. What I'm being told is that the boy who gave him permission to use the car is missing. So he's lying his ass off. We go looking for the person who owns the car, find out that the, the son of the owner of the car is missing. And now we got bullet holes all in the car. I got you. So something's... Bad. The only thing he lied about was his address in Winsboro. If he if he's knows something about this boy that's missing, the bullet holes, I'd like to at least, I guess I'll do as much good contact as I can. A few more calls are made, and it turns out the missing person is Michael Robinson, the alleged brother of the boy at the scene, and the man who gave him permission to be driving the car today. However, it's still unclear who owned the car in the first place, but the cop decides to forget about that for a moment and examine the vehicle a second time now that backup has arrived. Like, this looks close. Like, like bam, 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 bam. Yeah. In the boat. Okay, see? See? Little did he know, this is where all his questions would be answered at once, in the most gruesome way imaginable. I'm gonna do the obvious thing I want to do. Hey. Yep. Put your hands up. Put your hands behind, behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. You have a right to an attorney. Have one present during any questioning. At any time, you choose not to make any statements or answer any questions. You understand? If you cannot afford an, an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you by the court. Do you understand? Inside the trunk was the body of Michael Robinson. And all of a sudden, everything makes sense. 26 is 1250305712503571. 1250 F-39 Troop F desk. Good. Um, need a supervisor out here. All right, I get the guy out. He's super nervous. Uh, he lies to me about his address. He's got no driver's license. He says he's going to his house in Winsboro. Well, I find out he lives in Richwood. I pop the trunk. Sorry, there's a dead body in the trunk. Okay, so I, I'm not. We're, we've blocked. We've blocked in front of the car and behind the car. We've shut the trunk. We've shut the trunk. I have Franklin Parish Sheriff's Office with me. Uh, we're at 82. Okay, we're not. We're we're done. It turns out Michael Robinson wasn't related to Mitchell at all. Instead, he was merely an unintentional casualty of an armed robbery Mitchell was part of earlier. Who is that? Who is that? That's who is who? That's Mike. That's Mike. Yeah. How did Mike get there? Tell me. It wasn't me, man. It was. Okay. I just hit him. I just hit him, bro. I did. You just hit him? I did. In the mayhem of the robbery, Mitchell shot Robinson multiple times with a handgun before loading him into his trunk and driving him away to Winsboro to dump the body. But of course, before he could make it, he was pulled over by the officer for speeding. 
Michael Mitchell is being charged for the armed robbery and the second-degree murder of Michael Robinson. Mitchell is currently awaiting his trial, but is expected to be sentenced to life behind bars.